Hi, I am Professor Amitabh Banerjee. I am the author of COVID-19 Pandemic, A Third Eye. Continuing with the book reading, today we'll be talking the points of Chapter 8. The title is The Science and Art of Living with COVID. The summary is, science to deal with COVID had been brilliant, but the art was missing. We should have followed the strategy of looking at the big picture, combining both the science and art and taking a call and a judgment. Ours longer, vita brevi, said the father of medicine, Hippocrates. That is translated in English. It, it means art is long, life is short. Fully translated, the full quote runs. It was originally in Greek, the full in English translation is art is long, life is short, opportunity fleeting, experience perilous and decision difficult. The pandemic drove home vividly this ancient wisdom. World experts, they took hasty decision. Of course, their experience may be lacking, particularly dealing with communicable disease for a long time. The Western experts have not been addressing communicable disease. And therefore, we saw the age-old concepts like herd immunity, natural infection, they were ignored. The whole focus was on science, the vaccine and science, so science of vaccines. That is the best immunity, which was assumed, and natural immunity was overlooked. Whereas the science and art should have been combined. The science is a vaccine, it is a, and art is also the, whatever the nature's gift in immunity by recovery from natural infection. While the 19th and 20th century witnessed scientific advances at a leisurely pace, the 21st century is witnessing these uh, advances at breakneck speed. Computing, precision medicine, genomics and informatics are propelling this. These rapid and re remarkable advances seem to have come at the cost of the art. Medicine, which was one of the oldest arts, is increasingly becoming the newest science, according to Siddharth Mukherjee. The purity of this uh, new science is approaching the point of sterility. Art science is objective and easily understood, the potential often overestimated. Like we saw the potential of vaccine was overestimated in this pandemic. Art is subjective and abstract. Its subtlety difficult to understand and its potential often underestimated. It encompasses but not restricted to the social sciences, ethics, empathy and concern for human dignity both in life and in death. During the pandemic, human dignity was missing, both in life and death. People were isolated, died lonely, and after death also, their bodies were not handed over to next of kin. They were lined up for a common cremation. So dignity, the art of human dignity was found lacking. The pandemic from its genesis to its onward course revealed brilliant science but deficient art. The finger of suspicion is pointed towards lab origin of the virus, an accident of gain of function research. Again, brilliant science. Gain of function research aims to outpace nature, ostensibly for research purposes. It is hazardous to say the least. We don't know whether what type of research. The brilliance of science unleashed without the constraints of ethics and humanism has potential for immense harm like the misuse of nuclear power. So this gain of function research, this biological can spill over into biological warfare and can pose a threat to humanity like nuclear power. 
nuclear power went astray during the Second World War with uh, devastating consequences. Was the pandemic the result of biological pow power gone astray? As the dust settles, we may get the answers, hopefully. The dilution of the art of medicine has also influenced epidemiology, the study of disease dynamics in population, a vital tool for control of pandemics. Earlier epidemiologists did field and house-to-house -house visits more than even postmen. They was known as shoe leather epidemiology. The shoes used to get worn out. This helped them to collect data firsthand and also study the social and cultural factors, social epidemiology. In a population which are major determinants of disease dynamics, the art was known as shoe leather epidemiology. The classic example is John Snow's investigation of the London outbreak of cholera in 1854. Over the years, epidemiologists, particularly those in academics, became less enterprising. And Suleather epidemiology gave way to armchair epidemiology and social epidemiology took a back seat. Presently, we are in the era of big data. Data mining and mathematical models contribute to understanding of many epidemiological issues However, it has spawned a generation of mouse click epidemiologists or laptop epidemiologists, completely ignorant of social epidemiology or the ground situation. The harsh measures in response to the present pandemic based on sterile mathematical models illustrates the consequences of neglect of social epidemiology. Mouse click epidemiology predicted large number of deaths as well as generated evidence for drastic measures such as school closures and physical distancing extending to lockdowns. The latter was based on a computer project for influenza control by a high school student, strange but true. Building on this school project, scientists in the US ran hypothetical data into supercomputers framing policies reminiscent of Middle Ages strategies. Reminiscent of the Middle Ages, I mean, restriction of movement, authoritarianism, draconianism, Strategies such as school closure, physical distancing, and lockdowns based on this outputs were named non-pharmacological interventions. Almost we went back to the Middle Ages. Lacking insights in social epidemiology, human beings were taken as inert units in the model rather than social beings. Elegant computer outcomes indicated that such drastic measures would break the chain of transmission. Both the prediction and non-pharmacological interventions went wide of the mark as evidenced by low fatalities worldwide when projected and the virus traveling from China to Chandni Chowk. So all these measures did not really make any impact. The art of medicine since the time of Hippocrates cautioned first do no harm. The cure should not be worse than the malady. Blind science neglected this axiom. The collateral damages due to a sterile science are immense. Loss of livelihoods leads to severe malnutrition, increase in infectious disease and deaths from other causes. The harm exceeded the benefits of life saved from COVID-19. In the blind chase for the coronavirus, we have sacrificed a lot, human dignity as well as human life. The latest scientific miracle has been the development of the vaccine against COVID-19 in record time. The euphoria of this has raised the hope of immediate eradication. It raised rather, now we know it cannot be done. In chess, the hardest thing is to win a winning game. This was stated by an artist of the game, Emmanuel Lasker, a mathematician, philosopher and world chess champion for 27 years. An ambitious goal of eradicating COVID, which the world medical community appears to have ventured upon, is as tough as winning a one game. We have the winning piece, the vaccine and record time, a laudable feat. However, as in chess, more important than the winning pieces are the right moves and the right combinations. The pandemic played out across the globe in varying patterns. Every game of chess has the same pieces but different combination of moves depending on the situation in each game. Thanks to brilliant science, we have a robust surveillance and monitoring system and treatment protocols have been refined. All this with the vaccine made for heavy arsenal against the virus. The efforts of researchers, laboratory scientists and clinicians assembling these pieces are 
commendable. However, if we miss the art at this juncture, we will lose the game. While the science will tend to advocate mass vaccination, the art should see the big picture. Should we go for a win or a draw? History of medicine does not have any account of eradication of any disease in such short time. Like in chess, it is very difficult to win a winning game. The efficacy of vaccines is also mired in uncertainty. I mean, that was the, the efficiency we came to know that it doesn't prevent transmission. It's a leaky vaccine. That is when I, this uh, column was written. And now they are concerned that it has side effects also, particularly in the young, myocarditis, pericarditis, strokes. So this was the hurried way where science chasing the science and missing the art. Given these imponderables, it would be more pragmatic to opt for a draw and learn to live with COVID-19. Once we vaccinate the vulnerable of all ages and elderly, COVID-19 should cease to be a public health problem in India. It's already, as this, this was written, when the whole picture had not unfolded. As on now, it is ceased to be a public health problem. We have got much more uh, major public health problems than this. Mm -hmm. We should not. And uh, that is uh, why we are talking about the pandemic today, about COVID pandemic, when it, one may say that it is already over. Because uh, there is the same mistakes can be repeated in future pandemics, same knee-jerk reaction. So we should be very careful. We should be we should heed the lessons learned from the mistakes. And in future pandemics, we should not uh, go on one track, only focusing on the science, but missing on the art. So this is all I wanted to say in this chapter. Thank you.